Paul Shapiro, thanks so much for talking with us on Animal Air. Um, Paul, you're with the Humane Society of the United States. Could you tell us what your title is, please, and what you do there? Sure. Well, thanks for having me on. Um, I work as the Senior Director of the Farm Animal Protection Program at the Humane Society of the United States. And most of what we do at the Humane Society of the U.S., of course, has to do with protecting our nation's dogs, cats, and wildlife. But we're concerned about the treatment of all animals, including animals who are raised for food. And so our campaign focuses on improving conditions for the nation's cattle, pigs, turkeys, chickens, and more. Okay, thank you. Um, I spoke earlier today with a beef producer from Kansas, and um, it, her farm is relatively small. I believe she has no more than four or five hundred um, uh, cows and heifers. Um, it, it's um, and and she she painted a, a very uh, almost bucolic picture of of the lives of her animals there, and and she said that she cares about them very much and spends quite a bit of her time uh, looking after their their welfare and safety. The beef industry has a much better record on animal welfare when it comes to these type of issues than the poultry and pork industries do. So, for example, in the beef industry, for the first part of these animals' lives, they typically are living out on pasture. And, you know, there are some things that are done to the animals that are very painful for them, such as hot iron branding, which in involves inflicting third-degree burns on these animals, or cutting their testicles out, up, out of their scrotums with that painkiller, which is obviously extraordinarily painful for these calves. Uh, at the same time, though, when you compare the treatment of cattle in the beef industry to the treatment of chickens and turkeys and pigs on our nation's factory farms, uh, there really isn't much of a comparison whatsoever. Uh, you know, just as one example in the egg industry, unlike in the beef industry, the vast majority of the animals in the egg industry are confined in cages where they can barely move an inch their entire lives. These are animals who are virtually immobilized for more than a year before they're slaughtered, and it really is difficult to imagine a more miserable existence. The, so I guess um, then, uh, in your view, that this type of operation that the beef producer I spoke with earlier today is uh, perhaps a little bit easier on the animals than, than some of the other industries you mentioned. Um, uh, how about um, at the, the sort of end of life phase, um, the beef producer I spoke with earlier today said that um, after, well, first of all, there's the feedlots, um, and I'm curious about uh, your opinion on that. Um, she said that some of some of the calves stay with their mothers um, in the pastures until the mothers themselves uh, are able to wean them. Um, uh, other calves are decisions are made, I guess, about the, the quality of the breeding stock of the different calves that come along. And so some of the calves are taken off-site to feedlots uh, to become meat uh, or beef sooner. Um, and ha what happens in those feedlots? Uh, is, is that an area of concern for HSUS? The welfare of cattle and feedlots is definitely a concern. I mean, these animals are switched from eating a majority pasture diet to one that is based on uh, increasing amounts of corn, which is not natural or healthy for these cattle to consume in such high quantities. Uh, at the same time, though, in feedlots, the cattle still generally have freedom of movement. They can walk around, and there can be real problems with there being too much manure or wet conditions um, in the feedlot. But when you compare even their lives in the feedlot to that of animals in the poultry and in the pork industries, it's still generally significantly better. I mean, think about, for example, pigs in the pork industry, where the breeding pigs for years are confined in what are known as gestation crates. These are small metal cages that are only two feet wide. They're barely larger than the animal's own bodies, and these pigs are immobilized in them for generally four months at a time, unable even to turn around. And so when you compare the immobilization that animals are subjected to in the, in the egg industry and in the pork industry, even the worst parts of the beef industry generally aren't as bad as the typical standards 
in much of the poultry and pork industries. And that in, that would include the transportation to the uh, the trip to the slaughterhouse, and then the the experiences in the slaughterhouse itself. Um, yeah, I mean, transport for all farm animals is very stressful and is uh, a, a serious assault on their welfare. Uh, it involves putting animals in a strange environment, subject to lots of motion and vibration and sounds that they're not used to. Um, it generally involves depriving them of food for some period before the transportation. And so uh, transport of all of these animals, poultry, pigs, and cattle, to slaughter plants is an inherently stressful part of the production system uh, within the agribusiness industry. And then the slaughter itself, uh, that, that process, um, as I understood from um, the uh, beef producer who spoke with me earlier today, um, the, she's confident that, the anim that her animals are treated well at the slaughterhouse uh, 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 that uh, uh, she believes follows the federal um, regulations and guidelines. Well, I don't know how she can be certain of that unless she's there watching. Um, however, uh, what is certainly the case is that uh, most cattle are stunned before they are slaughtered, meaning they're rendered unconscious prior to having their throats cut. However, uh, the USDA exempts poultry from the Humane Methods of Slaughter Act, and so Poultry, chickens and turkeys, are, are more than 90% of all the animals who we slaughter in this country, and they don't have any requirement that they be rendered unconscious prior to having their throats cut. And so almost all of the chickens and turkeys who we slaughter in this country uh, are shackled and then put through the slaughtering process without uh, necessarily being rendered unconscious prior to uh, this whole slaughter process beginning. So. Uh, it may be the case that this one uh, small beef farmer is had, that her animals are being rendered unconscious prior to slaughter. Perhaps that's the case, but unfortunately, it's not necessarily the case for the vast majority of farm animals who are chickens and turkeys in this country. Now, how about it, on the subject of um, dairy cows? Th there was a case uh, that by now many of us are familiar with of the E6 Cattle Company in Texas um, that uh, a, a, one of your fellow animal protection organizations, Mercy for Animals, uh, uh, discovered via un an undercover video investigation um, was the scene of uh, some alleged abuse of, of uh, calves who are destined ultimately to become dairy cows. As I understand it, this was a, uh, is a very large uh, company, E6 Cattle Company, that handles anywhere, I, I heard two different estimates from the different folks I spoke with. Um, the owner said he has about 10,000 uh, calves at any one time. The local prosecutor said uh, he felt that that operation has about 22,000. In any case, there are only about 75 workers on a good day to care for that many animals. And in addition, the calves are taken from their mothers at local dairies at anywhere between one day to a few days old and then housed, uh, well, not housed, but kept um, in the outdoors at this facility. In, in light of Mother's Day on Sunday, what are your views about sort of that system or that process? The dairy industry's track record on animal welfare is a lot worse than the beef industry's. And uh, unlike in the beef industry, most calves who are born to dairy cows are removed from their mothers generally on the first day of their life. And this can be a stressful and often even traumatic experience, as you can imagine, for both the mother and for the calf. Um, in addition, though, the case that you're talking about specifically in Texas, where Mercy for Animals exposed the beating to death of many calves uh, who were suffering from frostbite because they hadn't been adequately protected from the cold is a horrific case. Anybody who watches that video would rightly condemn it for the brutality that's entailed in, in the video. Um, however, investigation after investigation in the United States, both by groups
groups like Mercy for Animals and the Humane Society of the United States and others have revealed this type of egregious cruelty to animals, um, where animals are being beaten to death, where animals are being dragged with chains or pushed with bulldozers or poked in the eyes. In some cases, we've even found animals being waterboarded, where high-pressure hoses were being forced into the nostrils of downed cows. These are animals who are too sick or injured even to stand and walk to their own slaughter in vain attempts to get them to stand up and walk. Uh, and walk. Um, so this type of cruelty, it seems, is more pervasive in the industry than they might be willing to admit. And the agribusiness industry's response to these exposés has not been to try to prevent this cruelty from occurring in the first place, but merely to prevent Americans from finding out about this cruelty by trying to make it harder for these whistleblowers to come out and uh, show the public what's going on on these factory farms and slaughter plants. Um, you're referring to, for instance, uh, House File 589 in Iowa, as well as the bills that have been, been introduced in Florida and Minnesota. What is the HSUS's opinion on those bills? These are draconian attempts to keep Americans in the dark about what happens to farm animals in this country. There's bills in Iowa, Minnesota, and Florida that are all pending right now that would make it a crime just to photograph a factory farm or to videotape what happens inside of a slaughter plant. And in some cases, even just use a pen and paper to document what's happening on these facilities. And it shows just how far this industry is willing to go and just how much the agribusiness industry has to hide when it comes to its routine mistreatment of animals. Uh, we're not talking about one or two rotten eggs or just a couple bad apples. Really what we're talking about are standard industry practices that are simply rotten. And some of the worst of those practices include keeping egg-laying hens confined in these tiny battery cages where they can hardly move for their whole lives and keeping pigs confined in these restrictive gestation crates. These are cruel and inhumane yet standard practices within the agribusiness industry. Um, as far as those bills go, do, do you... Uh, well, first of all, it, you brought up a point that I, I was unaware of. You mentioned that even pen and paper, use of pen and paper, might be restricted or prohibited? Any documentation. Wow. Um, and um, uh, as far as those bills go, um, what is your prognosis? Uh, I know you don't have a crystal ball, but do you have any predictions or ideas of uh, on on how you the, what you think the fate of those bills might be? Well, it's too early to tell. Um, I don't. I, you're right. I don't have a crystal ball, so I, I don't want to be in the prediction business. Um, it, it's hard to predict things, and as the saying goes, especially when you're talking about the future. So. Um, I don't want to comment too much on what I think may happen there, um, but I'm hopeful that all of these bills will be rejected. Okay. Um, back for a moment to um, the laying hens. Um, do, do, you, do you have an idea, I know I'm asking you off the top of your head, but do you have an idea about how many laying hens there are in the United States that are in uh, the, the confined conditions uh, that you're talking about? Um, there are about 280 million egg-laying hens in the United States, and more than 90% of them are confined in these cages that prevent them even from spreading their wings. Okay. And how about dairy cows? Do we have any numbers on those? There are about 9 million dairy cows in the United States. 